Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Um, in this video, we're going to take a look at what is NixOS. NixOS is a Linux distribution, which is powered by the Nix package manager and configured using the Nix programming language. Some of the key features that distinguish NixOS from other Linux distributions include that it's declarative. When we say something is declarative, essentially what we're saying is we want to tell you what to do and not how to do it. So for example, if I said, make me a cup of tea, that's me declaratively telling you what to do, not step-by-step -step instructions as in giving you a recipe and say, make me this tea, which would be kind of the other way, which is imperative. That's kind of the difference between declarative and imperative. And usually when things are declarative, what we mean is we're declaring them in code as well. So they're codified. Um, and we'll take a look at what that means in, in a second. So for example, in the imperative way, let's say we wanted to install a new uh, tiling window manager. Um, let's say we wanted to install Hyperland or i3 um, using the apt package manager. We may do something like this, imperatively giving it step-by-step -step instructions how to install Hyperland and then uh, perhaps saying various bits of config as well. However, in kind of the Nix world, this, this is what we do. And, and especially with Nix OS, we have a bunch of these options that we enable or disable. In this case, we're declaratively saying disable the i3 window manager and enable the Hyperland window manager. And we're not telling Nix the step-by-step -step instructions how to do that, which we might do the imperative way. We're just telling it the kind of final state and uh, Nix uh, and Nix OS in this case will go and work that out for us. And the reason I'm telling you about this in the NixOS video is because we can configure vast portions of our machine using these options. And again, we're leaving uh, the final state to Nix how to get there. We're just telling it what we want. Another really powerful feature of NixOS is the ability to really easily roll back. So we have this concept of generation. So when we make our change to our configuration, we generate a new generation. And we can actually on startup or even whilst um, in the OS itself, we can roll back to an older generation. And that's really powerful. It means that you're a lot less worried about breaking your machine. Um, you can try out stuff. If it doesn't work, you can go roll back, assuming you don't break your bootloader. And even if you do break your bootloader, you can always go and reload from a live uh, USB as you would with um, other Linux distributions. And we can take a look at what this looks like here at boot time. Um, we can uh, choose between various generations. So this has been useful for me when I've um, accidentally broken something um, and had to roll back to an older generation and try and work out what went wrong. But at least you can boot into your machine. And another key feature of Nix is um, OS as code, as, as, as some people have called it. Uh, and essentially what we mean here is, again, related to things being declarative, we're putting things down in code, in this case, in, in the Nix programming language. And this comes with various benefits, version controls, so we can put into a Git repository, put on GitLab, GitHub, roll back to older versions, have code reviews, all that other stuff that we, that we like. Um, we can then share this uh, easily across uh, multiple devices as well. Again, if it's a Git repository, we can do push and pull and... Um, share config between multiple devices. And then it also provides this common Nix programming language that you can use to configure a lot of different things. And in future videos, I'll show you how you can configure things like pre-commit, dev shells, even building Docker images. And you can kind of do that all using Nix. And you just have to know this one programming language uh, to do that. So you may be wondering, how do we actually go about using Nix OS? Like, what is it? How do we edit the configuration, et cetera, et cetera. We saw a little bit earlier. So what, what uh, you will typically do when you first set up NixOS is you will edit this configuration file you have. And so for example, you can use NeoVim to edit this etsy nixos configuration.nix file. Uh, let's say we want to set Podman. We might do something like this. Uh, we can go look up the NixOS options uh, and then we can see which ones we want to enable. So in this case, we want to enable Podman. We want to enable Docker compatibility mode and a bunch of other options. Then save our changes to the file and we can do sudo nixos rebuild switch. And here, what this is saying is it's rebuilding our configuration and switching to it immediately. We could also do something like sudo nixos rebuild boot 
and that would just add it as one of those generations we saw earlier and we could boot to it later but it wouldn't swap to it right now so now you're probably wondering how do we actually get started how can i get started with nixos um the easiest way is to download the iso and uh, burn it onto a usb the process will be similar as if you've done it for other print systems like ubuntu or windows um, you can then boot from that live media USB and install NixOS. So here you can see me going through the installation process. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing too complicated here. Do the usual stuff. Set your password. Uh, pick which uh, desktop environment you want. Um, NixOS doesn't really dictate, um, unlike some other operating systems, which desktop environment it wants you to use. Uh, you can partition your drives as well. Um, and just go through the install process. Um, and you'll have NixOS installed. One other thing we can do, which is uh, very cool, is we can create our own uh, ISOs. So here from my Nix configuration, I've created a, a Nix configuration called Graphical. Um, I'm then building it. Um, and this bunch of uh, build instructions here, build steps it's doing. And once it's done, it will produce this ISO in this result folder. We can then take that just like we did with the official ISO, put that on a USB, and we can put custom scripts and various other tools, and we can even change the uh, the window manager. We could have Hyperland on there if we wanted to. Um, we could put some SSH keys uh, to make it easier to do uh, unattended installs. Um, there's this really cool tool called NixOS Anywhere, which I'll definitely do a video about in the future. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you would like a more in-depth uh, tutorial about how you could set up NixOS, please leave a comment down below. Perhaps we'll do one how you can set up in a virtual machine uh, using Kimu. I think that's a great way to dip your toes into NixOS without diving uh, full first and committing. I don't know if you guys are aware, but I use Nix, by the way.